Right. Okay, so this brief video is a walkthrough of the second part of the fourth tutorial dealing with trusses. We are going to make enhances the same truss that we did in uh, we calculated by hand in uh, in the lecture. We start by opening workbench and I have dragged a static structural analysis into schematic and then I will go into the geometry in design model to edit. So in design modeler, I will select the plane, look at it, start sketching, and create my object. I check the units, I'm in millimeter. So that's fine for what I want. I will start creating my two lines. Okay, I will anchor one line here, for instance, roughly, and I will dimension it later. Make sure that I get feedback, make it horizontal and coincident here with the uh, axis above the other. Having done that, I will dimension. So it's always a bit tricky to dimension these things. Let's try put I dimension on that one, which will be 0, 075. Okay, and the next one, I will want I think, a vertical between that and that. Perfect. Okay, H1 and V1. H1 is 750 millimeter. And V2 is 500 millimeter, low point five meter. All right, I can decide to uh, to zoom it to see it better. Fine. Now the next thing to do consists in generating a line uh, a line object. So I will use line from sketches from context line from sketches. I select the sketch number one. I apply it, and I have material. I can then generate it. And that creates a line one object. The next thing is to create a cross section from this. I will do a rectangular cross section. It's the simplest. So that essentially creates a special kind of a uh, of sketch, which is already uh, pre uh, predefined. So to get the desired cross section, I need 50 millimeter times 200, sorry, 20 millimeter to give me a thousand millimeter square. It's fine. Okay. So that's it. And it's be fine. Next thing I have to do is on that object, is choose the cross section. I click on it, the line body object, and associ uh, associate the cross section. Just created one, called rectangle one, and it is done. All right. Now we can visualize it by going to view and cross section solid. Cross section solid indicates what it looks like. Okay. So. There are a lot of subtleties in terms of uh, orientation, which you can see here in between arrows, but I don't want to talk about that at the stage. Really. You can explore that by yourself. So now the next, the next, uh, next thing to do is leaving design modeler to return to workbench. And in workbench, we are going to analyze the system by going into mechanical, and we do that by clicking on model. Okay, so we now are in mechanical, and in mechanical we need to sort out two things. First of all, the mesh, then we will add the loadings and the, and the support, and finally we will add the solutions we want to, uh, to look at. Let's first do the mesh. So I can generate a basic mesh just to, to show you. It's not what I want, but we can do that quickly. So we can update the mesh. It should be very quick. And quite a few elements. That's not what I want. I want single lines. Still, let's check in mesh and do in statistics. And the default mesh contains 77 nodes and 38 elements. Not at all what I want. So in order to do it properly, I will insert the sizing, select the two objects, so I need to make sure that they are edges, so I put a filter, one, control, two, and apply them. And in terms of type, I will choose the type of, uh, of sizing, not an element size, but in element number of divisions, and I want one division per element, which is shown here in this uh, yellow uh, node, if you want. Okay, and I okay with that, I'm going to update the mesh, and check the number of elements in mesh statistics. Okay. Get that a bit higher, and I have got two elements, yeah. five nodes. Five nodes is a bit surprising. I would expect one, two, three nodes, but there are extra nodes for the beams. 
uh, out of plane, I think, in order to account for the orientation of uh, of, uh, of the beams. Okay, so next thing to do is to apply the loadings and the loading and the reactions. Well, um, constraints. Okay, so as usual, I need to add my supports. So I will add two fixed supports. One here, again, I need to have a vertex selection, that's fine. That's my first fixed support. I want another support. I can also get support from here. Insert fixed support. It kept, it kept uh, the vertex selec selection. That's great. Apply. Okay, great. Two uh, supports. Can see them both here in fixed support. I need to add now uh, force. Force. Select it first. Okay. Apply at that point. And the value, if not a vector, what I want is component components and I want along the y component and I think minus 1000 newton good perfect that is the uh, force is a the loading it's a picture next thing finally what I want to add is solutions ah before I do that I need to double check uh, something something is that I need to make sure that we have um, we have got pin pin joints or a revolute uh, joint so let's go to tools and options and in connections, I need to make sure that I've got three root joints. And fixed joints, no, not fixed joints. The so white behave as beams in, uh, in bending. So she knows what we want. We want it to compare with uh, the truss with pin joints. Okay. And let's add my solutions. So in solution, you can see I don't have as many, I don't have stress, for instance. It's because these are beams and not standard uh, elements. So I don't want them to be beam, they're going to be trusty, but that's another story, we'll see that in a minute. So I'm going to add deformation, one total deformation. I'm also going to have to add directional deformations. One along the x-axis, that's fine. I could rename it, but if we have time, so let's do like that and insert finally another directional deformation, this time along the y-axis. Okay, z is pointless. Just a symmetry. I also need to add some force reactions, force reactions, because that will help me to calculate to get the force easier. So I get them by name, so fix support, and another one, so one and probe force reaction on fixed spring support number two. Okay, fantastic. And I will add my final, my final. Uh, my final is going to be a beam result, and that's actual force. Okay, fantastic. And I now should be able to uh, to solve. Okay, so it has solved, and you can see oh, the deformed bodies. I really like to uh, always apply show and deform wireframe to see what it was at the beginning. Very, very small displacement, okay, in X, 5 microns, in Y, minus 22 microns. So this is obviously uh, exaggerated. There is a very large, very large uh, scaling factor. Let me get the forces as well. And, okay. and the actual force is given different values here. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. And uh, it's, it, it's not a bad job. There's one problem though, which is that the elements that have been used, you can check, the elements have been used. You should control F here, element type. You can see the element type is beam beam 188 and that's not that's not a, a pure truss element it's, uh, beams can take bending so we need i would like to uh, to not have uh, beams but uh, proper trusses proper rod elements that's surprisingly difficult to uh, to do because in um, in workbench you are limited to the number of elements you choose and by default workbench is going to to uh, to choose to get uh, to use uh, beam 188 as, as default line elements. So in order to do that, one need to be a bit uh, a bit uh, tricky and use something called APDL. APDL stands for uh, ANSI Parametric Design Language, I think, and allows you to essentially um, short circuit uh, the um, normal normal run and introduce commands of of your own. So we're going to do that. Okay, so to do that, and uh, you select 
body. In fact, you can add you can add uh, these APDL commands in three places: in pre-processing, in processing, and in post-processing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here we want to add a pre-processing command. So insert command that gives us access to to this. So little blurb. Um, yeah, what what we have here are um, comments. So if it starts with a uh, the exclamation mark like that it's for a comment so write something stupid yeah. I don't know. Uh -huh. and then we want want to write the various uh, commands that uh, are given in, in, in the text so i've entered the lines and what they mean well et stands for element type sorry i'm forcing the element type to be of type link 180 which is um, a rod rod element that you cannot access directly through a workbench and here i say that Put my um, select the type of type one link. So, that, so, so not, that's not so very clear, but it, it creates a link between uh, between these and the, and the section data, which is a cross section area. And I say it put it to a thousand millimeter square. Now we can solve again. Now, when you solve just just like that, it might actually uh, not be too happy and give you some uh, a couple of er errors. And that's due to the fact that one of the results, like actual force, is actually a beam result. And the element we have got now is not a beam anymore, but a link. So the way to, to, to fix that is to remove that actual actual force. Delete. And when you solve, it will be very fast because the calculation has been done already. And we can observe our results. Again, 5.625 microns. Minus 20.25. So this time, the, these deformations are exactly the same as what we did, exactly that as we did with the um, uh, by hand, okay? Because we used the truss by hand, very, very uh, much simpler. Let's check that uh, the elements have changed. So control F, the usual element type. Oops, element type. What do we get? That's my element type. Mm. Oops, it's mm -hmm. Can't find the element here. A bit strange. Hmm. Odd. Oh yes, yeah, of element type and element type one is of type link 180, which is what I chose. These other elements here are the elements that are responsible for actually uh, allowing the special element for where the loads uh, come uh, come from. Okay, so that's what I want to show you. Really, how to cal to uh, to calculate trust trust systems. Uh, yeah, the same kind of stuff that we we can do by hand. But in uh, using ANSYS for, for the answer. Any queries, please contact me by email or during your tutorials, and I will try to answer them. Thank you very much.